Hello and welcome to Q Radio and Ulster Rugby's The Breakdown Podcast, our chance to get to know the players a little bit off the pitch. I'm your host, Simon Hunter, and I'm delighted to be joined by the one and only Mr. John Cooney. How are you, sir? I'm great. Uh, thank you for having me on. I think I might have missed the one I was meant to do with Christian, so I apologise for that and uh, <laughs> I'm glad I can come back now. No problem at all. It's nice to have you at the end of the season, though, or close to the end of the season, at least. Yeah, still have that one game now on the 20th. Uh, so we've, we've been training last week and started again today so looking forward to that last game and it should be a big one well first things first it was your birthday at the weekend wasn't it yeah how um, was it benjamin button is what i've been calling myself I'm <laughs> getting younger with age but uh yeah it was lovely i went to glasgow for the weekend so visited uh my uncles and cousins and stuff over there so it was nice to get over I hadn't been over in about 10 years uh just to see them i'd obviously played games there but not in a social visit so it was nice to get over and Took a few days there, a few nice meals away. Went to Glen Eagles and stuff like that. So just oh, for lunch. So brilliant. It was a lovely few days away. Yeah. Did it in style, eh? Glen yeah. Eagles? Well, my uncle looked after me. <laughs> That's for sure. It's quite a similar city to Belfast, I think, in some ways. Glasgow, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's very. It's in terms of its infrastructure and stuff. It's uh, developed massively over the last few years. I remember being a young boy going over, and it didn't look like it did now. And so saying that, my uncle actually runs radio stations in Glasgow. So it's it's oh. good to be in here. He set Small up world. Radio Clyde and stuff. A few. Big radio yeah. stations over there, so yeah, he'd be happy to see me in here. A very, very small world indeed. Yeah, it is. It? Yeah, and of course now we have the era of social media. Mm-hmm. Did you take the opportunity to get plenty of pictures and over post there? Them up? Yeah, uh, yeah, I did get a few. I haven't actually posted them, so I might just save it for the archive. Uh, <laughs> any Sunday, I might be struggling after a night out, and I might post enough then to make me feel better. Schedule them in the diary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Big demand then, obviously, for the pictures. Um, do you take stock then, John, of, of what? maybe fans are saying as well on the likes of Twitter or Instagram. There are certain players, of course, who say we want to shut ourselves off, just like the way in the past players wanted to shut themselves off from commentary in the papers. Mm -hmm. But do you conform to that or or do you like Um, to have a bit of interaction? No, I would. I'd like to have some interaction. You have to take the good and the bad. And I've definitely been on the both sides of it. And it's it's been good since I moved up here. I've had a lot of great uh, feedback on social media and stuff like that. And it's nice to see and I appreciate it big time. I've also had times where it's it's been the other way and uh, take it as you want. Uh, I took it in a good way. It, if someone ever says I'm not good enough or somebody, it just kind of drives me to be a bit better. So, yeah, I don't mind either or. Just be nice to me. <laughs> there you go, folks. The advice is there. The advice is there. How important is it, do you think, John, to speak your mind? We know recently there was a certain journalist who had made mm. claims that the IRFU should perhaps abolish Ulster as one of the rugby-playing provinces. And you had of course had your say in, in that as well do you think it's important to be able to feel free to say what you think on social media there are maybe some players who might say you know maybe it's not for me to comment but you think it's important uh, I think you have to be smart obviously with what you say and when I did send that tweet or whatever I, I thought about it. I sent to my girlfriend I thought about what I was going to write in specifics because I nearly tagged the wrong journalist stuff like that there was two people yeah. the same name uh, I rang my dad who used to actually write for the independent as well so stuff like this, I wanted to be careful, but my mum's saying I'm a bit like my dad, being a bit outspoken at the moment. But I just, th- yeah, it just infuriated me, to be honest. I just, it, it just made me angry. I thought he was completely wrong. I thought, coming from where I was with Connacht as well, and to see how well they had done after people had made these stupid comments about Connacht as well back in the day, I didn't for one second believe that it was ever going to happen. But yeah. just I just thought it was disrespectful, and I thought, I don't know how the Independent would even put an article like that, even if... Some people say it was tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek or whatever. I still thought it was just disrespectful, even to say what he said. So yeah, sometimes I think if you believe strong enough, some you yeah. kind of have to put it out there and go back at them because hopefully now next time you'll think about putting up a crap article. <laughs> well, fair play. I mean, do you find that something then that motivates you on the pitch as well? Yeah, definitely. I Luke Marshall, I know, was very, very angry about that article. He was messaging me <laughs> a good few times after that, and it definitely drove him going into the Munster game and. He put it into the group as well. It's just saying how, how this can only drive us to be better. So it, it definitely, when, when you're getting abuse like that, it definitely definitely makes you want to work that bit harder and d- be a bit more successful. Well, you mentioned at the very beginning the playoff coming up against Ospreys mm-hmm. in just under a couple of weeks. How excited are you for that? And does it feel a bit like a last chance saloon this season to, to get something out of the season? Yeah, we, we know how important it is to play in the Champions Cup and... I thought we actually had a good campaign this season. We won four out of six games and we were just a bit unlucky on the last game. We didn't really perform as we should have. Um, and we know it's huge. We want to be in that top flight rugby. And yeah, it's it's good. Every 
excuse to come out and play for us is an important one and I've missed the last game with a knock so for me I just I just want to get every single cap counts <laughs> yeah. at the moment so I'd, I'd, I really want to play one more game in front of Evan and then that's when you can enjoy your holidays so we're just completely focused on that game at the moment Well the way in which it hasn't quite panned out as you guys had hoped in terms of making the Champions Cup playoffs making the Pro 14 uh, playoffs as well where do you think it went wrong then this season? Um, yeah probably Trey we started well looking back on games recently. I was watching a few of the first few games and we started well and it was kind of the in-between. You can blame whatever you want. We, we also lost a coach and then got a new coach and lost that as well, which Lots is obviously going to be a bit disruptive And in terms of that. And just not closing out one or two games kind of killed us. The Edinburgh game at home is probably the turning point of our season. If we had just scraped through that win and looked like we were going to, I think we probably would be in the playoffs right now. And I think Zebra away and Dragons away where we drew at the end. That was another big... They'd probably be the two games I'd look back at and think that's kind of where we threw away points that we needed. Yeah. And hopefully it's just going to be a learning curve. It seems to be been the way the last few years the lads said they finished strong. So I think the fact that we're starting to notice that now, I think that might make a difference next season where come that time of season, we're kind of really driving that we, we stay in these games where we know it could come down to the end. Every point matters and all that type of stuff. Yeah, the inches in sport, as yeah, they exactly, say. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> How would you sum up your own performances this year? Um, yeah, I've been I've been happy with the season. Uh, I've said before though, sports fickle, and you're only as good as your last game. So I know I need to perform well next season again. And yeah, it 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 was difficult, obviously, coming at the start of the season. And when I came into preseason, had nowhere to live, stuff like that. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. I was just staying with a friend on a mattress on the ground. And don't know why uh, we're laughing at that. I know. <laughs> it's yeah, sort of, sort of uh, reason, I'm making but, yeah. it sound worse than it was. I yeah, had yeah. all the food I need and stuff like that. But I think it's because you're so chilled saying it. it yeah. Is. <laughs> It's got music. Uh, yeah, and the pressure coming in. I definitely felt at the very start, but uh, we probably didn't say it to other people, but I remember my first game or two. I think wait, it was a Cheetos. I might have missed like three kicks or something, and it definitely hit me a bit that I was like, okay, I need to stop missing kicks. And it was definitely the pressure of it. I'm, I'm normally quite relaxed when I kick, and that was definitely the most nervous I've ever been. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it took me a while to adjust in terms of that, but got to fit in very well with everyone, and I think that made a big difference. I felt a lot more comfortable here. And then I haven't, well, in Connacht, I felt very comfortable. Stuff like that, it makes a big difference. If you're happy in your environment, I think it just makes a big difference how you play. And when I was in Connacht and I moved from Leinster, that was one of the things I was considering going back to Leinster. But I said I was happiest here, so that's where I think I'm going to perform best. And the same thing I could say here again, I'm I'm happy here and it makes a big difference on the pitch. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think I know the answer to this now, given what you've just said. But you've been, of course, at Leinster, you've been at Connacht and now up at Ulster. No pressure, mm-hmm. but... Who's got the best fans? <laughs> I'd have to say Ulster definitely have the best fan base. And yeah. I've said before how it's it seems to be kind of a family thing. The kind of everyone I've talked to, like even Jacob is one of them. You you grow up going to Ulster games. It seems like granddads go with their children or their godchildren, all this type of thing. It seems to be a family affair and it's pretty nice to see because a Friday night, I remember always watching it when I was younger, was always the main event of the weekend and stuff. Absolutely. So yeah. it's amazing how... It's they've got the biggest fan base in the whole season. I'm very sorry, I had all the teams. So, yeah, it's been great. I I I only dreamed to stand up for the Ulster when I used to watch those big European games. I remember Harlequins, Claremont, those games. Yeah, so used to always put the hairs on the back of your neck, and it still does that for me now, even when I come out. So, yeah, it's been amazing. Well, I want to touch on a word you've just used in family. Mm-hmm. How much, John, do you think the squad setup is a bit like a family? Have you found there have been players there, especially at the beginning of the season, who've helped to mentor you and who've perhaps been a, a good influence on your game when you've been here so far. Definitely, and even take coaching into account, uh, I put down a lot of how I played this season to Dwayne Peel, uh, an ex from half who was, he would have been one of the best from halves when I was growing up and actually had the joy of playing and so connect against yeah. him. He was playing for Bristol and I remember playing and he, he was actually sound as well. I remember like <laughs> trying to pull him back or something and he was just laughing. Um, so he's made a big difference on my game. He's, he's hard on me, which... It, normally a coach that played your position is because he understands what I need to do which is good and he just wants me to keep going forward and get more caps now for Ireland and stuff like that so that's what he wants me to be working on everything in terms of my game just to make sure that I have a point of difference getting into the squad and stuff like that so in terms of that he's been huge and then yeah I, I knew a lot of players coming up here people like Shear McCluskey I'd be real close with him Louis Ludic yeah. uh, Louis Ludic's a good influence on me he's a, he's a great man so it's good to be around people like him and yeah, just he works hard and they're the type of players that I always look up to, people who work hard and uh, know what they represent and stuff like that. So 
yeah, there's been a lot of good influences on the field and off the field. Mm-hmm. And of course, in terms of scrum halves, we're saying goodbye now to stalwart in many senses, Mr. Paul Marshall. Yeah, yeah, it's it's sad to see him leave, and I think he still has a lot to offer. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, they might have to call on him next season again. You never know because I think he's going to teach, or he might even just keep playing with, uh, yeah, and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah it's it's sad to see him leave, and he, I remember playing him years ago when I was Irish in twenties, playing against him for Ulster A and. I was always scared of playing them just because I didn't want to get stood up or sidestepped. And really? Yeah, they're the type of players from half, so I'd be scared of the kind of small, jinky lads. Of I don't mind the lad who runs straight at me and tries to run over me, but yeah, he's a phenomenal player and he's he's had a great career. And like I said, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, things turn around next season and he might be back. How would you sum up the atmosphere the evening that he, Tommy Bowe and Charles Piatai got that Kingspan send-off after the Glasgow games, the three of them, we're saying goodbye to the crowd in Belfast basically for the last time and they got the standing ovation at the end and they did a lap of honour as well. How would you have summed up that uh, atmosphere down there? Uh, it was incredible. Um, it was emotional as well. Uh, I think I tweeted it saying there's this person, Inky Johnson, who I follow and he said perspective drives your performance. Yeah. I was in the change rooms looking over at them and kind of seeing yourself maybe there in a couple of years and thinking about that could be your last game. It kind of made, made a big difference in the in the sheds, whatever, before the game, just looking around, I think everyone kind of got that perspective and I think that's where our performance kind of came and half time we were kind of uncertain of 16-10. I just think the second half, everyone just really came together and I think that was partly to do with them and people realising that we wanted to send them off well and the fans got behind them completely as well and just even the lap of honour they had at the end and all that just made a huge difference and it was just nice to be a part of it and they deserve every bit of the welcoming and the goodbye they got really yeah and the other individual we haven't mentioned of course also getting a send off that evening was fan favourites mascot Sparky do you think yeah. any of the three aforementioned players might be making a guest appearance I heard, in the Andrew, next I heard Andrew Trimble <laughs> uh, did that before in the past but <laughs> yes. I, I don't know if he did a great gig so I don't think it'll be him so I'm not sure I think we might have to audition for the role of Sparky <laughs> for someone else so I, I'm not sure on that one yeah we're going to be hearing that ahead of a Champions Cup match, some players might not be available due to other commitments in brackets. You yeah, know. it'll be difficult to find someone to do that. Who, who, <laughs> someone like Craig Gilroy might be good to do that. He's a bit of a messer, so yeah, he'd be good. Uh, you mentioned Andrew Trimble there, Ulster's most capped player of all time, has also said he will retire. Just a word on, on him and his influence on this current Ulster team and also his time at, uh, at Ulster too. Yeah, it's a sad one again because uh, still in great physical shape, something he's always been unbelievable uh, he's he's physical and he's fast and stuff like that so it's been difficult to see I think throughout the season he was kind of thinking about it but he still had another year in his contract but uh, I think at the moment he just said just with his body and stuff he just he just feels it's the right time to go out and even just the video posted by Ulster on their Instagram and Twitter the other day just some of the hits he used to make were incredible um, and I think just as a professional just even just how much Joe Schmidt and people like that think about him it, it just it shows the honour he has and I think it's a pretty good mark of respect how, how good of a professional he was and how hard he worked and I think it's pretty adamant in the way he played. He gave everything so I, I don't think I could ask for much more and I think he, he's a lot to be proud of and he had a great great career so it, it's sad to see but he can never uh, look down himself. He should be should be very proud. And 70 caps for Ireland as exactly. well. I think it was just one more than Tommy he keeps saying. Is that, yeah. I think it's Tommy. Is, <laughs> yep. He likes to point That's that right. out. <laughs> Plenty of banter there. Yeah. Well, in terms of Ireland, we know that you've been pushing all season to make Ireland uh, squads and teams indeed as well against some really top tier nations. Ahead of the summer tour to Australia next month, how hopeful are you that you'll be making an appearance on the pitches out there? I am very hopeful, yeah. I think I have to be realistic. That was why I, I think it's going to be 50-50. I think Kieran Marmy will go and Conor Murray will go because they've both played a lot. So, I think it could be between me and Luke McGrath, who's another great player. So, yeah, if I do go, I'll be happy. If I don't go, yeah. say la vie or whatever, and I'll go on my summer holidays and I'll come back and I'll start back training in July. And, yeah, I, I'll be bitterly disappointed if I don't, but that's not really going to get me anywhere. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. In terms of living here then this year, has Belfast been what some people crack it up to be? Has it been a good place to live? Oh Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I've had the luck now living in Dublin, Galway and Belfast and uh, it's kind of happy medium between both. It's not as big as uh, Dublin but it's not as small as Galway and 
Uh, I kind of like the way it's kind of suburby. You've got different restaurants, different bars or different everything you need kind of choice. you don't always have to go into the city so i, I kind of like that um so yeah i've really enjoyed it my mum used to live here she lived here for a few years so she told me it was great she was rugby square around there so she always had good words to say about it so yeah i've enjoyed it tell us a bit about the befrienders scheme isn't it that you yeah participate in and basically it's an opportunity to keep company those who might be feeling lonely yeah um I used to do a bit of stuff with homeless people in Galway, so it's something I like to do kind of on my day off because I have a lot of free time and people say you're busy, but I finished my degree when I was 21 and stuff like that, so I just kind of got sick of playing the PlayStation and stuff like that. It's only an hour a week. <laughs> yeah. It's nothing much, but I just found when I first came up, when I used to go Tesco and grocery shopping and stuff, I just started to realise the amount of elderly people outside waiting for taxis and stuff like that. And I don't know, I just thought, why wouldn't I look up something that you can lend an hour or bring someone if they need to go get their shopping done or stuff like that so i just googled elderly volunteering in belfast and found bci and, and then met with janet one of the mm-hmm. workers there and and she sent me up with that and I, i'm doing work with a lad called john and it, it's been great since i've started it's been a few months now and like i said it's only an hour a week so i don't think it's that much but my granddad actually used to do it as an elderly man he used to be about 80 years old in scotland wow. and he was picking up basically younger people and traveling bringing them to church and bringing them all around and bringing them food and stuff so it's it's quite an honor to do what he used to do and he got a medal of excellence i think from the pope or something like that so for all the work he did with saint vincent de paul so brilliant yeah so it's nice to do something that he did so yeah and what about john is he a bit of a character he is a character he (laughs) hates rugby so it's kind (laughs) of did he tell you that straight away when he found out you play for us yeah he doesn't like rugby (laughs) He likes football, so, yeah, at least I like football as well. But, yeah. no, he doesn't like rugby. He doesn't get why we go around trying to kill each other. But it's, <laughs> it's nice to know where you stand, though, exactly, isn't it? It's yeah. nice for people to be honest and just tell you what they think. Yeah, no, I've, I've enjoyed it. It was difficult to start getting to know someone and you're going into their house and stuff like that. But, yeah, I've enjoyed it now, and I, I think he enjoys his company and I enjoy his company. So, I'm hopefully there might be other people to help. And, yeah, it's just something, something different to do on my, on my down day and stuff like that. In terms of downtime, any holiday plans? I know you mentioned holidays earlier. Any particular holiday plans? Uh, plan on going to Thailand with my girlfriend. So it's either in June or not. It's, yes. it's a bit of a nightmare for her because she uh, has to. She's booked off some weeks in June, and I might make the tour, and then she's going to have to cancel it, and she might even get the time off. So her job could be in jeopardy at the wow. moment. Whether she has to switch across to July, so that's the annoying thing, and I can feel her anger and frustration because it is quite difficult. So we're booking on booking.com with free cancellation stuff like that in case I make it and we can get our money yeah. back and yeah it's pretty hard she doesn't know whether we're going away in like three weeks or yeah. seven or eight weeks so yeah that's the plan Thailand I think for three weeks or so brilliant mm. well I, I think it's fair to say you've enjoyed yourself then this uh, this season and this year and you're looking ahead to the, the summer but all the very best with selection perfect ahead of Fingers the summer crossed. tour and we'll see what happens there and thank yeah. you very much once again John for coming in no worries thanks for having me in You're very welcome. I've been your host, Simon Hunter, and thanks very much for listening.